Once you have your lesson, you want to get your students enrolled. That's very easy to do. And even though you may notice that you have codes or links for every lesson, I'm going to show you an alternative way. Let's press the hamburger button and go back up through our folders to the top of our course. Here's where we're going to see the code for the course. Notice there's no hamburger button because we're all the way at the top. If we go any higher, we'll go out of our courses. Most elementary school teachers only need one course per year. And if you use this code or this link, then you only have to share one link for the entire year. Let's talk about one more way to share access to your course using a learning management or LMS like Schoology or Canvas. You can take the link for your course and copy that into your LMS. They usually make it pretty easy to add materials like links and tools. Skies can be imported several ways, but I'm going to show you one easy way using a link. So here's where you can paste the link and just title your course and press add. In this case, I've already made my course right here. And when you click on it, and when students click on it, they'll see something like this. We talked about logging in previously. If it doesn't appear to log in, just click on the name of the course or the pop-up button. This will bring it full screen and the students can interact with your lesson. You can decide what students can see and what they can't see simply by the click of one button. In this way, students won't be overwhelmed because they'll only see a few things at a time. Now I want to also show you what this could look like for middle school or high school. Middle school or high school is going to have different sections. So just make sure you click the correct section and you use that link for that section. We'll show you how to kick people off your roster if you accidentally mix up the codes. Notice that if we go into this period, it has a different code for the course. When you're actually teaching uh, for middle school and high school, notice we have this set up so students can't post here by unchecking the first box. So they could review, they could see things but not change anything. Here's our current chapter. And then chapter three we haven't gotten into yet. So it's hidden by unchecking that one box. And in this way, again, your students won't be overwhelmed. Let's go to chapter two. Notice that we don't have any student work yet. It would appear over here. If we look near the top, we can see this is in period three. So let's pretend that period one was already completed. Over here in period one, you can see all of the student work. These are just examples. So when you're teaching, it's easy to switch between periods. Just remember that when you're starting at the beginning of the year, that you're clicking on the correct section. We reviewed logging in, and many students uh, will click continue with Google. But if you ever have a problem with a pop-up or with permissions, pay attention to the address bar up here. You may notice a lock icon or a camera icon so that you can allow permissions. Once a student is logged in, all they need to do is either paste the link or enter the code. They can enter the code and press submit, and then they can navigate through your folders. Notice how when they click on math, they only see the first couple lessons because the others are hidden. Likewise, they only see the first science lesson. And then in the lesson, students can respond to the cards you allow. And if collaboration is turned on, they can see other people's work. It's a good idea to help your students become familiar with the hamburger button so they know how to open and close your lesson of contents and to navigate between your folders and into the various lessons. And remember, if you ever have a student having trouble getting into a particular lesson, you can always make use of the particular lesson code. Back here on the teacher view, you can see that when students start answering, their answers start piling up. You can spread them out and you can start looking at them and giving them feedback and giving them grades. In this case, I changed the point scale to one. Most people stick with a four point mastery grading system. As students are posting, you could be grading right away and providing feedback. And you could also be sharing some of the student work. For example, if I want to highlight this student, I can press the gray circle and students will now be able to see their own work and the student work that I made public. When you're ready to make all the work public, you can just turn collaboration on by clicking the eyeball as a shortcut.
Now students will also be able to see everyone else's work, and they'll also be able to comment. Press any one of these X's to collapse it, and press the circle to expand. Notice that each card also has a timestamp, and if you click on it, you can get lots of information about the card, when it was created, modified. Once student responses start piling up, we recommend you give feedback and grades through our mass grader. Here we are in the teacher view, and we can see your control panel, which has a link to the mass grader. By clicking on grades, you'll be able to see all your prompts at the top and any student work below. You can see nobody's responded to these prompts yet. And if I go to the first prompt, I can see that we have some ungraded work, some fours, and some missing work. Here, I can grade one at a time, or I can select multiple cards and grade them at once, or I could just grade them all at the same time. Now I have my fours, my threes. We also provide a shortcut to give teacher feedback. When you press save, that feedback will appear below their card. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But first I want to point out that if you press the word paste under any of the other cards, you will put the last comment you shared. If I change the feedback, now this will be the comment that will be shared. We also provide shortcuts to two other types of feedback. One, annotation, which will allow you to write on the student's work. And the other shortcut is for voice. If you wanted to type what you say, just change it to the flag in the language you'll be speaking. Otherwise, it'll just be a recording of your voice. I'm going to show you one of the benefits of using transcription. Thank you for letting me know. Can you go back and try to think of any questions? You can retake, play to listen, and you can also edit. Let's go back to the lesson and see what this looks like. If we expand the cards, you can see that everyone has feedback, everyone has grades, and these people have voice feedback. Thank you for letting me know. Can you go back? And some people have writing or annotation. This is just what it looks like when students write on worksheets, which is easy to do in Skies. Finally, when you're giving your lesson, you might want to switch into a, more of a presentation mode. You can double click on a card to go into this presentation mode, which works with your arrow keys or the arrows that appear at the top of the screen. And you can make use of these bigger buttons or cancel. And we also give you a shortcut here to the present. Sometimes you may want to print things out or families may want to print things out. There's three dots in the corner that will take you to page view. And in page view, you can print out individual cards. And we also give you lots of options at the top to filter by student or to change settings and then to print out all the cards. If I go back up to the top of my course, there's also a portfolio button which students have access to their own portfolio. You can look at all your various students and see their work. Parents can also use this to review a student's body of work with them. When students are reviewing work or reviewing work with their families, sometimes it's helpful to give them access to other languages. As a teacher, you have a no translation button that you can use to give students access to different languages. Notice nothing changes. I've just given students access. Over here on the student view, students now have a no translation button, and they only see the flags I've given them access to. If they choose the flag they want, it'll contextually translate everything. Not only what I've written, but what they've written and their classmates have written. If they write something in a language that you don't speak fluently, you can also make use of this feature by choosing the American flag. And things that are written in other languages will appear in English.